Atlantis. The elite in search of immortality. Were there more highly developed civilizations than now? Did Atlantis exist? The existence of an island country where a human-like god reigned, surrounded by his children, an assembly of gods who ruled people, had wonderful technologies, mysterious magic objects, possessed climatic weapons, the ability to clone a human being. Medical technologies prolonging a person's biological life beyond the species limit, meaning increasing life for a long time. The so-called immortality in the body for the selected ones. This information is mentioned in ancient legends of different peoples of the world. An earthly paradise, the country of gods, where supreme god reigned, surrounded by an assembly of gods. The legends about the super advanced antediluvian civilization, which was situated in the far west, on a large island surrounded by water. The country, the powerful influence of which once spread all over the world. The country, where El autocratically ruled with an entourage of his selected servants, the elite, and endowed his children with power over different nations, refer to very ancient times. Both nations of the East and peoples of the West, who lived several millennia ago, still maintain these legends. Each nation called this island state in their own way. For example, in the oldest Sumerian legends, it is the blessed island of the moon, the land of the living, where there was no disease and death, the god's place of dwelling. The scene of the oldest Sumerian myths about the gods in Lil, Inki, Ninhursag, about the human Utnapishti who survived the great flood. These legends are embodied in the Sumerian epic about the hero Gilgamesh, as well as in the Babylonian poem Anuma Elish. It is precisely from these legends that much later after many centuries, Hebrew priests borrowed stories about the heavenly Eden, the forbidden fruit, the expulsion from paradise, the great flood, and much more. In Celtic mythology, it is the Isle of the Blessed, Avalon, located on distant western islands. Its symbols are a glass tower or palace, miraculous apples that grant immortality, and so on. The word Avalon is originally found as a proper name in Welsh genealogy with regard to the mythical ancestor of the oldest dynasties of Britain. In Chinese mythology, the paradise of the immortals, Xian, it is located on three sacred mountains, Penglai, Fengshong, and Yingzhao, which swim in the sea ocean. It is mentioned that the immortal people, Xian, mount the clouds, riding the flying dragons. They have the garden of goddess, Xi Wang Mu, in which peaches of immortality grow, Pan Tao. It is known that in legends, an immortal person, Xian, often has a guise of a white bearded old man, and he is portrayed with attributes of immortality. And in the mythology of the Hellenes, that is, the ancient Greeks, this country was called Elysium, the Isles of the Blessed, Atlantis, Hellenes about Atlantis. Atlantis, 
That is how this highly developed island state in the Atlantic Ocean was first called among the Hellenes. But the ancient Hellenic philosopher Plato in his dialogues Timaeus and Critias, Plato was a descendant of the Athenian lawmaker of the 6th century BC, Archon Solon, who was called the wisest of the seven wise men of the country of Elada, the country known today as ancient Greece. According to Plato, the great mystery that the history of natural cataclysms repeats itself and the present civilization is far from being the first, was told to Archon Solon during his travels through Egypt by the Egyptian priest. By the way, according to the legend of the Hellenes, Solon's bloodline goes back directly to Poseidon, the god of the seas, who it is thought founded Atlantis and settled his children there. According to an ancient Greek legend, Atlantis was a large island state which was located to the west of the Pillars of Hercules, opposite the Atlantean mountains. Other ancient sources report about the land of Titan Atlas. The Atlanteans waged wars and spread their power far beyond their state. Atlantean society was in the stage of decomposition, selfishness, power, luxury, ambitiousness, corruption of morals. According to the legend, as a punishment, God sent down a severe earthquake and a flood upon them. The large island of Atlantis was destroyed during a sudden strong earthquake and rapid flooding. It was flooded in the water of the ocean in one day and one disastrous night. According to Plato, the destruction of Atlantis occurred 9,200 years before the time of Archon Solon. That is, 12,000 years back from present times. Today, there is quite a lot of scientific material on what oceanologists, geologists, and geotectonic experts and specialists in other fields of science think on this issue. Many scientists had no doubt about the existence and submerging of a big area of land that had once been located in the Atlantic Ocean between Europe and America, which Plato had mentioned. However, many were astonished by the very fact that in this legend, the land submerged in just one day. However, the current rapid global climate change on Earth, which has been observed over the last two years, indicates that in the modern world, any day may become the last for the consumer civilization. As Igor Mikhailovich Danilov said, it is people themselves who by their choice and exactly by their choice whom to serve, the devil or God, are bringing closer or postponing this end of the world. A lot depends on people. Some people doubt the end of the world. But today, only a fool or someone who doesn't see what is happening behind the window may have doubts. Since ancient times, people who lived on different continents have preserved a common spiritual heritage which contains an understanding of how a mortal human can attain life without death, how to acquire eternal life, 
It was based on primordial spiritual knowledge about the existence of the spiritual world, the eternal world of God, that God is one, about the temporality and mortality of the material world. There was an understanding of the power of God and that it lies in God's love. There was also knowledge about the seven messengers of the spiritual world, the executors of the will of one God. From time to time they come to this world at the most important stages for humanity. That is, their immortal spirit temporarily incarnates in this world in a human body and thus, being in equal living conditions with people, they fulfilled their mission until the destruction of the body's shell, meaning the death of the temporary body. While six of the seven messengers from the eternal spiritual world come occasionally, and when necessary, one of them is constantly present on earth at God's behest. He has many names, but his true name is Araman. In modern terms, he is like a programmer who wrote a program which is what people at different times called the devil, Satan, Iblis, or simply intelligent system. The system, a part of which is consciousness and thoughts coming to a person from the system. Thoughts exert influence and work according to patterns. Like programs, Araman constantly monitors the work of his global intelligent system. He stays here in the material world for just one day. Based on an ancient understanding that the entire material world with its billions of years exist for just one day. For many, a question arises. Why are the devil and these demons needed in their heads? All these programs with thoughts and emotions that come, built on pridefulness, envy, hatred, and a multitude of earthly desires. However, according to the primordial knowledge, it is precisely that they create the conditions for human choice whether to be mortal or to attain spiritual immortality. Thoughts seduce and generate earthly desires, stimulate vices, a thirst for power, and dead attributes of the material world. But these programs, filters, the devil and demons are also all seeing guards at the gates into true paradise, God's heaven. The spiritual world is a world where there is no matter. It's a world in which there is another form of existence, interpreted in human understanding as God's love. People called by different names the immaterial place where messengers from the spiritual world constantly reside. One of the names known today is the legendary Shambhala, headed by Rigdon Japo. According to the primordial knowledge, Shambhala is located between the real eternal world of God and the temporarily existing material universe. That is, in the highest 72nd dimension of this sphere. It is from there came the mention of the number 72 in ancient legends, tales, and images. It should also be noted that the familiar material world changes already in the fourth dimension. And in the seventh, it is no longer present as matter. The seal of Shambhala is the ancient Alatra sign stylized as the all-seeing eye of God or the sun rising from the horizon in a triangle with divergent rays. A territory or place in which Shambhala had an interest was marked by the seal of Shambhala as a sign. Similar signs of distinction were worn by representatives of Shambhala when they temporarily incarnated in this world, as well as by those from among the worthy people who helped them. As there have been before and to this day, 
there are many legends about Shambhala, which are intertwined with legends about the Cosmic World Mountain. In the legends, it's been associatively said that immortal gods live on the top of this world mountain. This concept is associated with an immaterial place located outside three-dimensionality, which can be spiritually visited by those who are called saints. And this is connected with the processes of significant spiritual transformation of a human being from mortal to immortal one, and has nothing to do with matter as such, meaning neither with a person's physical body nor with any material place on earth. Possessing this understanding, it is easy to distinguish wheat from chaff. When the primordial knowledge is lost. A human being feels the primordial spiritual. This is embedded in him at a subconscious level, but a human also hears the thoughts that consciousness is constantly dictating to him, and he mistakenly perceives them as his own. Whatever a person chooses in himself, what he attaches his attention to is what he eventually receives. Loss of spiritual knowledge occurs when a person ceases to work on himself spiritually, loses his inner connection with God, that is, the possibility of gaining his real immortality in a temporary life. Instead, he begins as a servant to fulfill directives of consciousness, to seek immortality and salvation in the material world. The result is definitely sad, a subpersonality. The patterns of consciousness as a part of the system are the same at all times, therefore, Everything in the world is stereotypical and repeats itself after a certain period of time. 12,000 years is just a cycle. What happened in Atlantis? A majority of people have chosen a consumer format of civilization in their minds. The desire to achieve immortality in the body became the dominant idea. Consciousness began to actively distort and substitute the primordial spiritual knowledge with directives beneficial to the system. Thus, ancient religions were born, where spiritual action inside a person was replaced by an external spectacle and satisfaction of earthly desires. Atlantis is an example of that. Thus. Due to the loss of the primordial knowledge, in the legends, people began to call the seven messengers from the spiritual world gods. This misconception by the majority was taken advantage of in their earthly interests by ordinary mortal people, who, having gotten their hands on power, resorted to the latest achievements of science, the discovery of prolongation of human life beyond the species limit. They called themselves the legendary immortals although at the same time they remained mere mortal people who just significantly increased the term of their life. An ordinary mortal man named El declared himself the supreme god. He appropriated names and epithets from the legends of one of the seven messengers from the spiritual world who permanently resided on earth, Araman. And then he appointed as gods first his retinue and then his children, giving them the names of the legendary messengers of the spiritual world. And to make people believe him and his retinue, and to support their power, El and his servants, the elite, created Elysium on an island with a favorable climate and a single low mountain, similar to descriptions of the world mountain. As a result, after several generations of their power, people could no longer distinguish where the truth was and where the fiction. Only nothing remained of the holy, 
the society became degraded. Salvation of the body became the goal of people's life. And the concept of one god turned into worship of a material image of a mortal man with a beard sitting on the throne. It only seems to a mortal human that his earthly power is unlimited. But this is only an illusion created in his consciousness by the system itself. In actual fact, he becomes a controlled slave. Whatever thought the system imposes on him is what he will execute with obedience. The descendants of those who managed to survive after annihilation of Atlantis to hide from retribution and to survive the subsequent times of the new spiritual formation of mankind became keepers of the ideological heritage of Atlantis. When the epoch of patriarchy came, they started to actively propagate the ideas of omnipotence and sought to implement them and to establish a new world order, planning for centuries ahead. Controlled by the patterns of consciousness, they played a game of the system in secret knowledge and secret activity. They established closed groups, clans, secret orders, organized initiations into the so-called great mystery of mysteries, presenting the story of the country of El as fate of the selected ones, endowing their pridefulness with belonging to a supposedly dominant race of highly developed people, which in their opinion must rule over all people on earth, that is, to the servants of El, the elite. This can be clearly traced at different times in history. It was precisely on their initiative that there appeared stories, including the ones about Atlantis and the mountain of the immortal Olympian gods. This information was subsequently implanted into the minds of new generations as a pattern of behavior. After all, what is permitted to gods is what human pridefulness will invariably copy for itself as well. The descendants of the Atlanteans took many other initiatives, causing a majority of people today to have lost spiritual knowledge, to dream about immortality in material bodies, and not even to know that already for a long time they have been living under the aegis of El, and unconsciously seeking to imitate his elite. But this didn't happen immediately. The descendants of the Atlanteans waited for the time when the system would gain strength and would gain dominance in people's minds. The time when humankind's spiritual resistance will be weakened because they knew the main thing, that everything starts with the human being and his or her choice.